are living in waste age, the era of waste. In the name of commercialization, we are producing more waste than ever. Every year, we produce 40 million tons of plastic, which ends up either in a landfill or in the water bodies. Half of 8 billion tons of plastic produced in the last 50 years is still littering around us in one or the other form. One third of the food produced, which is more than a billion tons, is wasted. Apart from food, our farmland generates 14 billion tons of agricultural waste every year. We burn 10 billion tons of fossil fuel and add 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide to the environment. I must tell you, the situation is really devastating and it's suffocating now. The imbalance created by us is not only threatening the other species, but also our own existence. Technology, no doubt, has done a great deal for us. We are no more dependent on the sun for light thanks to electric bulb. The outside weather condition doesn't bother us much, thanks to air conditioning system and thermostats. We pump out the portable groundwater so that we don't have to depend on the rainwater for our usage or agriculture. We fly higher than eagles. We move faster than cheetahs. We can travel across the oceans with technology. Technology has given us that sense of power, that sense of authority, and that sense of accomplishment. It gives us a, the feeling that we have conquered the nature. And that gives us the sheer audacity to say things like, save the nature, save the environment, save the planet. It time, it's time to put things in order and re-recognize the power of nature. I'm using the word re-recognition here because our ancestors were very well aware of it. Our underprivileged counterparts knew the power of nature, which reminds me of an interesting story of Molis, which is a tribe of honey gatherers of Sundarban. Every year in spring, they would brave all dangers and their lives to collect or gather the precious honey. Well armed and equipped for all the dangers, just to get that precious honey, they knew the value of that beehive. Still, they would leave a part of it to regrow for the future seasons. They knew and revered the power of nature. Though they, didn't, they had no idea about the term sustainability, but, but they know how to practice it. On the contrary, we being more civilized, are deteriorating the natural resources at our disposal and deteriorating the environment, our environment, our air, our water, our soil, to an extent of self-sabotage. We have polluted everything that is available to us. Never say you will save the environment or planet or nature. Nature has all the capacity in itself to heal. We have seen the trailer during the pandemic. Life was flourishing. Every other species was growing and enjoying the beauty of nature when we were shut in. It's time to realize that we have done enough damage to the environment. We revolve around energy. Energy is the basis of our economic development. And carbon is the source of energy for every individual that is present on this planet. Nature has given us a lot of learnings. We can learn from the carbon cycle, for instance. Just look at the beauty of the nature, that is photosynthesis. It gives, it gives carbon in one form to another form, it serves us back, and then we give it back to the nature, and the cycle continues. Where we went wrong, 
we have given much emission to the environment and have accumulated it into the atmosphere. We have cut down the system which will sequester it back to the environment. And that is where we went wrong. So we, sh we should learn from nature. No carbon capturing technology ever developed by us can, can compete with the carbon sequestration capacity of a tree. We think we can develop, we can innovate with technologies, but we need to learn from the nature first that how does it, how nature does it so well that it can sustain for a longer term of time. As, as I already uh, have mentioned that energy is the source of economic development. And all the economic activities is, it revolves around the energy and energy we obtain it from fossil fuel which is the root cause of environmental degradation. And renewable energy is the only way out of this menace. We can only find relief from this climate change or global warming with renewable energy, and that is the only way out. And the solution lies with the nature in photosynthesis. Everyone is aware about the forest fires of California, of Amazon, farm fires of Punjab, Australian blaze, uh, fire blaze, and recently the landfill fires in Delhi. They were all considered waste, but in fact, it was energy, because where there is fire, there was some fuel. Ironically, we are burning the fossil fuel and emitting uh, carbon dioxide to the environment, and on the other hand, the biomass decays itself in the natural process and also adds up to the environment, which is accumulating carbon dioxide and is le leading us to climate change and global warming. The drill is that we need to, if there is fire, there has to be fuel. So we need to tweak the technology there. The technology or the innovation comes there that we need to change the form of that fuel so that it can become usable. Biomass is not a ready to use fuel like coal and petroleum, which are also, by the way, once were biomass because they were just, they got buried under the earth's crust, under pressure and temperature eventually convert into coal and petroleum, which we use. And because it's very convenient and it's very easy to use, that's why we are not bothered much to go for biomass because if, if we can remember, if we can recall our history or we go back to our ancestors, we'll, uh, we'll see this that they have, they have been dependent on biomass, on woods. They would cut the trees, branches to, you know, get the energy from it. But until 20th century, the petroleum, which is now considered as black gold, was also considered waste because till 20th century, we didn't find a way out to use petroleum even. Before that, it was considered waste, and it was wasted. And once we have known the oil refining system, we came to know that, OK, petroleum is a very good source of energy, and we need to use it. Same is, same is the trick with the biomass. We need to tweak the form so that we can change its form so that it is readily available. And the beauty with biomass is that it is something that grows in the nature. So it will never end. And unlike fossil fuel, which is claimed that it will, you know, it will get exhausted after a certain period of time. So the challenges with biomass is its hygroscopic nature, moisture content, inconsistent shape, grindability, storability, and it is scattered around a very large area. These are the few challenges that needs to be addressed so that it can be used as a uniform fuel. So for that, pre-processing, of this biomass is required, for which torrefaction is the technology. Torrefaction basically is a thermal process of conversion, converting the biomass into uniform fuel like biocoal or biochar. Thermal con conversion reduces the biomass into energy dense carbon rich material, which properties is very much comparable to coal that we use in our conventional thermal plants. Now, uh, charcoal making is something 
which is as old as human civilization. Everyone knows the drill. Wood is cooked under oxygen deficient environment and coal is formed, charcoal is formed. Everyone knows uh, the thing. But the problem with this technology is it's quite traditional. And in modern times like now, such a traditional approach cannot be replicated into a technology. So we need to improvise. We need to change it as per requirement and time. We need to change it for it, for this. And that's why with, we needed a technology that can process low end biomass like paddy straw, rice, uh, paddy straw, forest waste, agricultural waste, or municipal solid waste into bio coal. We needed a system which can convert, which can handle 100, 200, or up till 500 tons of biomass in a day because we are generating in millions. At least we need to process on a daily basis in 100 at least. We needed a technology that is commercially viable. So after many years of perseverance, persistence, hard work, multiple trial and errors, failures, our team was able to make and develop a decentralized torrefaction plant which can serve the purpose. Just to give you an illustration, I would take the example of my home state, Punjab, which is famous for stubble burning and is blamed for polluting North India. Punjab, the annual uh, coal consumption of Punjab is 12 million tons. And on the other hand, we also generate 50 million tons of biomass, which also, which either decays biologically or is set on fire. In both cases, it is generating pollution or it is emitting carbon dioxide to the environment. So just imagine, on one hand, we are importing coal from faraway states to utilize it for energy generation. And on the other hand, we are wasting a biomass which is having four times the energy potential of the imported coal. And it's not about the uh, Punjab, it's about the whole country. We are doing this stupidity just on the name of get, uh, you know, easy and convenient uh, energy. We don't want to put in the effort. That's the problem. So for that, after that, we have n number of technologies available to us, which can further, after getting torrefaction, which is pre-processing, I told you, those were the challenges which would be tackled by torrefaction. And then after that, it would be integrated with other modern technologies for green, uh, green hydrogen generation, then methanol generation, or biodiesel, or even electricity production. Just to give an illustration, if this particular project gets implemented only uh, from uh, Punjab's perspective, I'm talking right now, if this particular project gets implemented in the whole state, we'll be requiring about 1,000 different decentralized torrefaction plants of about 200 tons per day capacity, requiring 50 square, meter, square kilometer of area for each plant. And that execution will lead us to add 350 million US dollars to Punjab state's economy. Will create 1 million jobs. Will mitigate the rural migration and in addition to that, we'll also reduce 60 million tons of carbon dioxide emission to the environment. Just imagine the impact it is going to create if that technology gets implemented. We just have to accept the fact that we cannot win the nature. We have to surrender and get in synchronization with it. Until and unless we get in tune with nature, we'll, we are not going to survive. You are a part of the nature. You're not an entity existing apart from that. And if you're not, you know, uh, preserving it back, doing things to preserve it, you're not going to survive. So nature is mighty. It has the power. I would leave, I would try to uh, brief you about something like, it's a huge, it's a huge project. Torrefaction, it, I'm, I'm just giving you the numbers that it, it will add this much 
to the economy and this much jobs and all. It's a huge task. We cannot do it alone. So from this platform of TEDx, I would like to call out for people and communities to join hands to do this task together so that we can give a better future to our ge future generations. Because they deserve it. We should not give them punishment of a bad environment. Because they did nothing wrong. Why should they pay for the consequences of our deeds? So I'll leave you with a thought. Whenever you take the, uh, a bite of your next meal, just, one, just remember that the food that you're having is made up of carbon dioxide, which is being exhaled by you. Your body is a super machine, which runs 24 hours on 2,500 kilocalories of energy. In that energy is not sufficient for a car engine even to run for five minutes. So just imagine the power nature has embodied in every natural and living being and every natural process that exists, which is quite 100% efficient than any other human invention. So I think I will leave everyone with a uh, message that we are in this together. We have to fight this together. So less word, more action. Less on paper, more on practice. Thank you so much.